Yeah, thank you. So the next topic will be our lightning talks, six, six times five minutes, and just two sentences to the rule. The rules are very tough. Five, five minutes means five minutes. Uh, the time will be shown on an iPad to the speakers, and when the five minutes are over, then they are over, the music will fade in, maybe you can make a last sentence, and then it's done. And if you're not ready, then you're not ready, but then the next speaker will enter the stage. So let's start with the lightning talks. Thank you. Thank you, Sven. Um, I will begin by just showing some uh, fusion magic or uh, some, some fusion trick, which I used in a project recently. Um, do we have... No? Can we make the screen show this laptop screen? Oh, okay. <laughs> I hope that doesn't count towards my time. That's looking better. Oh, Slack. All right. This looks about correct. Um, so we just see a very simple um, news output. And the challenge, the, the idea was, we need to fetch some of this page data via Fusion, or via, via uh, JSON, basically, via JavaScript from the front end. And uh, we thought, OK, how do we go about implementing a Node.JSON API in NEOS? And uh, yeah, of course, Fusion, Fusion is not just for rendering pages. You can render all kinds of things with it. For example, also JSON output. And uh, it's actually very easy to achieve a uh, JSON formatted structured data output from Fusion. And I'll just show you how you can do this. Let's switch over to the editor. What I have here is the root Fusion of this site package. And what I actually did was hook into the root matcher by saying, OK, if my requests format is JSON, then I'll just render a different prototype. And that's basically the, the main magic. You need some additional stuff for it. For example, if you want, um, your, uh, if you want your page to actually um, react to a dot JSON endpoint, so for example, which we'll see in a minute, to be able to say uh, my page slash page one dot JSON instead of dot HTML, you need to additionally load a root and tell it just like the default HTML root to refer that request to the um, normal NEOS front end root part handler. And of course, we need to load these routes via settings. And what happens then is that we get into this condition. And it'll try to render a prototype, which is named after the page node type, with dot .json um, attached to the end. And what that does is it renders an abstract page. Um, and we use, or I use, the HTTP message prototype here for it to return the correct content type, application.json. And um, of course, there are cache settings in that prototype, and then the actual page that gets rendered is this one, neos.notypes page, so far so good, .json. Um, yeah, and then I simply set the output property to a page extractor object. Let's have a look at what that does. That's an objects. There's an abstract node extractor. And the page extractor inherits from that. And that's a raw array. The raw array doesn't really, uh, isn't really used that much. It, what it does is it returns an array instead of a string, which the Neos Fusion array prototype does. And then here, we can simply read from the node. For example, we can read the ID, the title, the JSON URI, and so on. And then um, in the page JSON, I defined the actual page extractor, which inherits from that. So it extracts title, ID, and so on. Um, and additionally, it renders its own children as a raw collection again. And also, the children are rendered again using that same page extractor object. And the result of this, and that's really all there is to it, uh, looks like that. I can go to page1.json and get structured output. 
in JSON format. Oh, I'll just show how the JSON is actually generated um, with the children attached. And of, I can, of course, also output content or any other uh, node properties, whichever I want. So that's a very simple way to create a node JSON API. Let's just skip back to that very last thing. The JSON is actually rendered uh, here. To that output, we attach a processor, and it just does JSON stringify, and then we get all those arrays which we output it rendered nicely as JSON. And that's it. Center. I'm talking about small fusion tips and tricks. And the presenter's not working. I oh, know. Sometimes you want to redirect the parent or the child node to the uh, node to the parent or the child, but only on the front end. And I've done it like that most of the time. I just create a mix-in in YAML. Then the code I share later on Twitter. And then on the root, you can say, if I'm live, I'm, and if this node is an instance of full bar read front-end redirect to parent page or front-end redirect to first child page, the renderer gets run with a prototype. And this prototype can look like that, but just can redirect to the parent page or to the child page. And if this there no child page, it rendered go to the fallback node who is the parent page. And like that, it's really easy to create back-end node documents only where you can pass some more content in. It's very handy. Second, automatically set right header type based on location. Again, create a mix-in. You can pass this mix-in to different kind of headlines perhaps with pictures, subheadline, like that. Create a small prototype. And with this query, you can check if it's the, the first element. You go to document node, instance of Neo's content collection, then instance of full bar first element, get zero, and just check is the node the same as the first content node. If you get true or false, then you know it. And in the headline, like that, you can say, okay, I'm the first element. If I'm the first, I'm getting a H1. Otherwise, I'm getting H2. And a subtag name, I can calculate like that. So it gets a H2 or H3. And in the renderer, you see with augmenter, you get a header around it or not. It depends. But like that, you can take the responsibility from the editor to set if it's a uh, a H1 or A2, and like that, you get a right markup. Third, yes, sometimes you have very long words, and they don't fit on the screen. You can hyphen them, but not in every browser it works. And But it should like that, how you will do it. With Fusion, you can replace, for example, a double pie with double pipe with shy. And for that, you have to create some settings. The first transliteration rules down that you get, don't get a, um, a dash if you create a URL. And at the end, it just creates a little setting in regex style with double pipe. And then there's the magic. You have some nice fusion. Who's looking is in the front? Is there a, um, um, a space or not? And if there's no space, the people can just write in the back end a double pipe and they get the, the uh, title with a shy in it. 
and I process it on, a, on the head. There I delete the, pl uh, the placeholder because I don't need that in the in the title and this kind of stuff. And on the body, I just say replace with the shy, and it works. In the back end, you see the double pipe, and in the front end, you have the hyphen, correct hyphen for mobile views and stuff like that. So, next. <laughs> So hi, I'm Thomas, and I'll tell you something about um, node templates and node templates magic. Um, quite some time ago, uh, Dimitri and I started working on a feature for Neos, and that got released finally as a small package um, some months ago, and it's called Flowpack Node Templates, and it's really helpful. And who knows this package already? Yeah, okay. And uh, who has already used it in projects? Okay, great. So um, uh, what does it do? Um, or what it is for? Um, with node templates, you can automatically modify uh, node properties when you create new nodes in the UI, and you cr can also create um, child nodes automatically. So um, sometimes it's not easy for editors to work with um, empty content collections, especially if they are nested. And so you want to insert some dummy content um, to make um, editing easier. For example, in a, a multi-column um, element that's, um, yeah, that would use Steam Package. And as you see, um, in the multi-column element, um, a dummy heading and a dummy text are already inserted. But it's not like auto-created child nodes because the ed editor can modify everything um, afterwards. It's really just about boilerplate content. So um, next example um, shows how you can um, um, interact with the node creation dialog of the uh, React UI. So uh, you want to in insert a carousal, so it's the elements of the demo um, page. And instead of inserting the carousal and afterwards inserting four um, image nodes, you just select the images in the node creation dialog, and then you have your carousal with four images, four image nodes inserted, and um, that's quite nice. So all the properties of the eel context are um, available in the node templates. I won't go into detail of the um, um, configuration, because it's really very simple, and um, you, you define your structure in a declarative way. So um, you, you define your child nodes, your properties, and so on. And you have um, possibilities to uh, yeah, use loops and conditions with, with, uh, with items and when um, configuration options. But it's really simple, so you can just have a look. Uh, you can require the package and start using it. Um, I guess um, almost every Neos project can be improved. Uh, you, can, you can make editing easier for editors. Um, um, in almost every Neos project with uh, the package. Um, so what's next? Uh, we released a new version 1.0 um, two days ago, and now there's a signal that is emitted, so you can even further um, extend the functionality. So let's think of an example. You have perhaps um, a chief editor who um, wants to give uh, the editor some hints on how to create uh, new articles. So um, he creates a conference template, um, enters a headline, and uh, um, adds uh, some, some more boilerplate content in the Neos UI. And just have a look at the time, okay. because the chief editor is typing a bit slowly, so if you're bored, you can have a look at my stocks. They're really nice. <laughs> so he creates another template, a regular template. Doesn't make much sense, so I skip this part. And now the, the editor um, wants to write an article, so he uh, in the node creation dialog, he types in his title, he chooses the template he wants to use, and 
there are the uh, boilerplate content elements the chief editor has um, created. And it's quite nice because um, sometimes uh, it's over or almost over. Okay, so it's nice. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, thank you. Uh, I just uh, entered the free space for an enlightening talk with maybe an off topic, uh, corporate social responsibility for open source agencies. Maybe we don't have to do anything because we are already doing a lot of stuff in th regarding this because, I mean, voluntary time, contributing NEOs is also maybe regarding to this. But we said <coughs> we want to make something different. We have a huge engagement in Brazil. This is my personal affinity, and we're doing this since 2016. We started just collecting monies uh, from our clients, from our friends, and from our employees, and we started with uh, 100 soccer shirts and 3,000 euro the first year. And um, we are working together with ProMondo, a huge um, organization in Southern America. We visited the project and we talked with them together, what can we do? Everything in Brazil is regarding soccer. Yeah, you, you have to do something with soccer and then you can reach the kids and uh, you can have, so <coughs> they can take care of them, they get education, they get food after doing the soccer training. These pictures were inside the favela, but this is not a good word to call these ki kind of uh, areas. They call it community. And here you can see the Dietz Gringos, that's what we call it, uh, with our family um, inside uh, the school project. And um, this is the soccer place, 40 degrees, no shoes. And But the problem is, here's a good German goalkeeper. Um, <coughs> the, the problem is um, that um, the ground comes down each heavy rain. And these three girls died one year before while playing soccer. And so we have to invest in shoes so they can use uh, the pretty cool and new soccer area, but it's only allowed from uh, insurance reasons to play with the soccer games. And then one year later, we even grew up a little bit. We founded an association to collect more money, and uh, there we had our packages, and um, this is the favela from outside, and this is the roof, what's still missing. This is why all these classrooms are so humid and we can't use the computers which we already organized for them because we have to stop the humidity and this is one of our biggest projects in this year 2018. And then <coughs> they, re they um, received all their presents and it was, yeah, for most of them, it was the first time in their life they had real shoes. It's not credible, but it's like that. And... Um <coughs> Yeah, this we are together with the kids and um, cleaning up the area to give them some culture over that. And this is really the main goal is to give them a perspective because the kids really think they do not have a perspective because they live in a favela like their parents and the parents are their parents. And to show them that there is there are so many po possibilities with education, we are also thinking about maybe... Um, Find out if there are some kids are good in mathematics and make a kind of exchange. They can go uh, three months to Europe to work at Zeitgeist and maybe one of the next uh, <laughs> core developers from Neos, <laughs> maybe someday, maybe a goal from us, uh, uh, will be from Guadalapes in uh, Rio de Janeiro, what the name of this community is. Um, what we did, um, <coughs> yeah, we'll visit the project again. These are our goals. Um, we need even more shoes to attract more kids and shirts and, well, maybe to get 200 school books. The second part of the renovation of the roof, we have to organize clean drinking water, uh, the snacks for uh, uh <coughs> the children after uh, playing soccer, separate toilet to attract the girls, and medical care once a week. And this is really uh, um, a project <coughs> which is really touching me, but you really have the chance to give them an anchor, to give them a perspective. And um, if you do, okay, we are maybe we're not doing an, uh, enough social responsibility in our company, then that's a good idea to start. We have a, we have a kind of a toolbox, um, and this toolbox uh, works uh, very easy. Uh, I can show you, and then this is the end of the talk. Um, it works like that, just grab a coin and do it like this. So, and there's something, there's something happening with, with your, um, because something happening with your karma. I mean, 
I don't know <laughs> how the camera is right now, but it could be possibly be like that. And then just put it here into, and I can promise you that each euro of this will be there to 100% because we buy the things, we organize the stuff and it's brilliant to do them. And um, yeah, feel free in the area, you will find an even bigger donation box. And if you want to support the project, I will be very happy. Thank you very much. Okay, hello everyone. Um, I have a multilingual page and I got challenged that the top level domain should become a dimension. And to me, I'm Alexander Kapler. I'm here from Hamburg. And uh, yeah, and had this issue that the customer came to me and said, well, we have three domains. And we have three languages. So we have countries and languages. And our domains are looking quite ugly. So they are having like this de underscore de or um, at underscore de. And they want to have it more nicely. And we thought, well, um, <coughs> the top level domain is already included. Why do we have to add it in, uh, again in the URL? So I was thinking how we can solve that. And to be honest, I had no clue at that point of time. So my idea was, OK, getting started. And I'm asking the community. So I started in the community a topic. And I asked, hey, is there anyone uh, who has an idea how I could solve this problem? And I got quite some answers by that. And someone told me, hey, have a look. There is something already uh, which Bernhard Schmidt started. And the guy over there. <laughs> and uh, we had then a chat, and uh, we thought it would be great to combine our forces to get that working with NEOS. So what happened in the outcome was that we have now a flow package uh, in the NEOS dimension resolver, which uh, can achieve this. So you can now configure your domain as a dimension. So in this case, what we had, we had said, OK, we have a top-level domain, um, DE or AT, and said, this is one dimension. And with the help of the mode, we can also uh, do other parts. Like, the default is the URE path segment, but another default is in there as well. So the sub-level domains can be also uh, used out of the box as a resolver. And not only this, they did a great documentation, a really good documentation. And here's also uh, included how you can extend that if you need us another resolver, which does something what's not out of the box available, you can extend it. And this was not possible before in that way. So this is the result, how the domains are looking now. They are looking quite nice. Um, and here you can find the package on GitHub if you uh, want to use it. So we're using it on production, and uh, it's working really awesome. We had so far no issues at all. And therefore, go for it and try it. I want to especially thank you, um, Bernhard Schmidt and Bastian Weidlich, which, which made this available or possible, and uh, the supporters who gave us a little bit of money for that to work on it. And uh, they are, this is a great thank you to the community, to those two guys, to everyone which made this possible. And to recap, it's really good um, to see that customers can influence NEOS, can shaping NEOS, can bring new things to the core, make it even better. And working, toge working together makes things easier. Thank you. <laughs>